Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different Swell YouTube channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day like me and if not, you better be manifesting, planning and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you guys for sure. Alrighty, so getting right into it you guys, this is going to be the two part I teased with you guys last time. Uh, this is going to be the second part to my podcast interview I did with my boy Deron Frazier of the Let's Talk About It podcast. Uh, we did this back in June of 2022. Um, we, as you guys, uh, for those who uh, looked at the or listened to the previous podcast interview, and if you haven't, make sure you check it out. Uh, but for those who have, uh, as you guys see, this is a follow up from the conversation or a continuation of the conversation we had in regards to Juneteenth, uh, uh, racism, as well as my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, and so many other things. So without further ado, you guys, let's get into it. And then once it's over, I'll come back on, uh, give you a little bit more info on what's, what's going on in Difference World. And then um, that'll be that. Yeah. <laughs> so here it is. Check it out. Welcome back to another episode of Talk About With The Run. I'm your host, The Run Frazier. So, happy Juneteenth. Happy 4th of July. I want to say thank you for listening. And we're back again this week with Different. She's going to be talking about her struggles and how she made it through depression. How, what motivated her to get through suicidal thoughts. We're going to be talking about suicide in this particular episode. We're going to be talking about how you can manage and get through it and things that you can do to help yourself. Um, she's a very knowledgeable, experienced woman. She's very well-versed, well-traveled. And as you heard from episode one, she has a lot of things going on for herself. So um, we're going to be back again this week with different. We're also going to be talking about a follow-up from my previous episode of Black Women in Mental Health. There were some tragic things that have happened since then, and we're going to be talking about it on this particular episode. So again, thank you all for listening. I'm your host, Ron Frazier, and this is going to be Different Part 2. And a follow-up, what was, and I haven't did a follow-up on that story, um, but I do know, you know, some stuff that has happened since then. And what really, and you just hit a point, you hit an awesome point because it's going to lead me into what I'm about to say. People will judge that and say, oh, it's a long thought out process, or I never, I never, I never do this. I can, I never do that. It ain't that serious. You never know, man. Just never know. But I'm about to tell you, we'll let you know that suicide affect, it can affect anybody, Mm -hmm. anybody, no matter what your profession is, no matter what, how much money you got, no matter what kind of lifestyle you're living, it can affect anybody. You can know, you know that just from the celebrities that don't kill themselves. Oh, yeah. But the facility that this young lady went to, one of the therapists that she was seeing for that, ended up committing suicide. And they're in the position where they help other people deal with this. Yeah. And that's what's really heartbroken. Because she was heartbroken when she found out what happened. But if someone who work in this field, who deal with this every day, who talk people off the ledge, who talk to people about dealing with how to deal with this emotion, if someone like that end up doing it, you, you can't say what you would never do. Yeah. You can't say that that won't never happen to me because it happened to this person. And that's their life profession. So, like you said, think about who you, you who you're going to be affecting. Who are you going to be impacting if you're doing this? You talk yourself down, you know, believe in the higher power, you know, whatever your religion is, but, you know, think about that. Even if you don't believe in higher power, believe in your damn self, man. Find purpose in yourself. Yeah. Find reasons to live, man. Reasons to go on. You have value to yourself. You you matter. So even if it's not a higher power you believe in, believe in yourself. Right. That should be a right. thing. You, you worth it. You're worthy. So you said that um, one of the things you guys talk about is the historical part of, mm-hmm. um, like, racism and stuff. Mm-hmm. I got a question. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Because this has been a big debate across the country. And in some states, they've banned it. Some states, they haven't. But teaching critical race yeah, theory. I knew you were going to say it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Cool. Well, first of all, let me hear your thoughts on it. What is, what is it that you think about it? Let me tell you mine. I like to hear yours first. Tell me yours. I did a whole podcast on it. <laughs> my thought. 
Well, give me the short one. Give me the short answer. My short answer, yeah. it should be taught. It should be taught. It should be. I mean, you can't deny it. What, what my problem is that in this country, they try to change history mm-hmm. from what it really was, right? Mm-hmm. And you can't talk about some things that happen in history and try not to talk about other things that happen. It's history. Exactly. It's what this country is exactly. built on. It's, it, is, it is how we get to where we are today. So you just can't say, oh, we don't want to talk about that. Oh, yes, we are. Mm-hmm. You know, they try to say that you're making us feel guilty for something our ancestors did or we wasn't there. Here's my thought on it. You, you, I agree with you. I concur on that. But like, just like how they, how they feel about, you know, if they don't, if here's how I went to high school. <laughs> if we wasn't allowed to say prayer in high school, I didn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. That's just how I felt about it. And I don't care if you gonna call me unpatriotic or whatever. I never said the pledge of allegiance because we were not allowed to say prayer in high school. They stopped doing that by the time I got to ninth grade now. And so I felt if and this is well with the pledge of allegiance, if they're not gonna say prayer, then why can't have the pledge of allegiance as well in the in schools? And so tagging on with your your critical race and, and putting that in as well, I do feel that that should be taught in the schools. But if they're not going to teach critical race, then take our pledge of a damn week. Because then, right. so if that makes sense, if, if, that's my my outtake on it. Don't preach yeah. one and not the other. So like you're saying, you can't pick and choose. Put it all in. Let's put back, right. If you want to, you know, keep the pledge of allegiance in, and, in schools, then put back prayers in school. Teach the critical race theories. They're also... Um, I know they're hearing talks about uh, teaching about same sex in the classrooms with that. Now, that part, I think that needs to be taught and discussed at home because you just never know how people, right. how children, people are raising their children and they have their right to raise them the, one thing, the way that they want. And so with that, I think just because that's sexual nature, that needs to be taught by the parents. Now, race, right. you can't hide your, you can't hide your race, but with sexuality, that can be, you know, hidden. I'm not saying it should, but you can't hide your skin right. color, but you can hide, you know, your sexual preference. So that's why I say, you know, critical race, it should be talked about because you can't hide that. But with sexual, it's the history of the country. Yeah. You know, with, with sexual, that, that's, the parents need to talk to them about that. The bottom line when it comes to sexual is biology part, you know. Everything else outside of biology, mm-hmm. physical biology, when it comes to gender, mm-hmm. physically, you're born one or two ways, okay? That's it. Anything outside of that, like you said, should be taught at home. Yeah. You know, that's... that's I that's, think if I can remember home. back, that's how they did it in high school. They just talked about, like, sexual reproduction, male to female. They never really talked about sexual orientation and things like that. Right, and that's what I remember in high school, and that's how we came up. I just think that it's going far. Like you said, that's something that need to be taught at home. Critical race theory is, you know, I think it's history of the country. is basically, I feel like it's denying or trying to just whitewash what happened in history and not talk about it anymore. But Yep, which is exactly why I wrote this book, to help them never forget. <laughs> You know, definitely. So that's exactly why, you know, I'm reaching out to my people, our people, you know, the black culture to, you know, remind them and to not try to erase our history and make us accept what they want us to accept. You know, this is what. Right. Is. And so, with again, going back to my book, what if, you know, asking those questions, what if this happened to your people instead of ours? How would you feel? You know, that's where it brings it back to. And so, unfortunately, when we have to go to another, you know, protest over the death of an unarmed, innocent black person, hold these illustrations up and show them. Ask them the questions there. What if this was your son, your daughter, that was shot and killed by a police officer? Would you be out here, you know, stomping out, you know, trying to have your voice being heard, speaking for your child, although the media is painting them out to be a thug, oh, they should have complied, oh, he was running mm-hmm. away, he was doing this, whatever, whatever the case, you don't even know this person. But all automatically, the victim is the criminal. Right. And they do that so often with our kids. Well, yeah. I got three teenage boys. And, mm-hmm. um, right, matter of fact, they 
18 and 219. Yeah. And I talk to them a lot because, you know, they're driving now, they're out with their friends, and they're out different times of the day. I can't be with them all the time like I used to. So I have that type of conversation with them. But just like they're killing black men, police are killing black men, well, how do you feel about the fact that you have unarmed black men being killed for minor infractions. But and yeah, you got these white folks going up in grocery stores, shooting up and killing yes, people still yes. safely being, you know, obtained without any, any okay. you know, any kind yes, of he just killed, killed people. Yes. So, yeah, that's why I wrote the book, What If? You know, why is it okay for it to happen to this group of people, but not this, you know, other group? Why is it justified? And so... Slowly but surely, you know, I, I have a good feeling about this that it will, you know, it, it'll, it'll, it'll make some people think. How do we get past? That? I mean, it's not even a matter of how do we get past that. It's, it's more so of having those conversations, basically accepting and acknowledging like, accountability. That's basically what it all revolves back to, you know. And, and for some people, you know, you got to make them see what you see, and with this book, that's what it does. It, it holds the mirror to their face. It asks the questions. What if this was your people instead of ours? Basically, let me just get a little off tangent with this and say to note to the critics, for those out there who would say, you know, when they read this book, oh, this book is used, it can be used as a tool, you know, for the black community to uprise against the white community. You know, no, it's not. Stop that BS. This book is simply meant to make you think about, you know, thought-provoking conversations such as injustice and systemic racism in America. You know, one thing I've learned from number 45 is, you know, you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. So although a lot of people are not going to like this book, I'm going to go where, you know, I know they're going to feel me. With this president, you know, he had, what was that, 75 million people? That's 25% of the adult population in America still condoning and, and riding for him even after this man, you know, it has incited or insurrected, you know, insurrection, if you will. And, you know, refuse to, you know, lead the White House peacefully and, and been in peace after all of this, people are still riding for him. And so that right there in itself taught me, no matter what you do, what you, you know, out there pitching to the public, it's always going to be somebody out there selling what you buy and they're going to ride for you no matter what. So you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. Don't worry about what the naysayers have to say. The people that have common sense and that are mature enough to understand, you know, the gist of the book and get the Point, especially when they read hypothetical, they will see this is not a tool that's meant to, you know, incite any type of violence or encourage any type of animosity between any groups or anybody. This is simply meant to have make you think, to share your opinions so that we can have the conversations that need to be had. Even if it goes nowhere fast to run, nothing be so failure but a try. So at least I've tried. But that's a lie. This book is going to take off and it's going to ring the world's bell because I've manifested for it and I'm planning and prepared for it. And so, you know, for that to happen, you know, people got to read about it and tell their peoples about it and share, you know, their reviews about it. And, and so definitely, again, go to my website, differenceworld.net, get your copy of my book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. And again, also be informed that it does come with a disclaimer. It's intended for a mature audience only. And so if you can't take this type of heat, then don't bother coming to this kitchen. Uh, because it's just, like I said, it's going to ruffle some feathers. It's going to make you think. Like I said, in Third Eye, we educate, motivate, and entertain all at once. And this book will definitely educate, it will inspire, and it will entertain you. <laughs> One of the three going to get you. And like I said, um, if the questions don't get you, then the illustrations definitely will. You familiar with Jane Elliott? I am. She does the Blue Eye the, the project. Yeah, the Brown Eye Blue Eye project. What are your thoughts on that? Because people, what are your thoughts on that? Because I, we need more people sound, like her in America. <laughs> yeah, we need more like her. sound like she put them in a in a situation similar to what you're doing with your book. Mm -hmm. You know, make them see things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You know. Put yourself in a situation, you got brown eyes, now you're the black person, and you have to deal with all this racist stuff that's going on with you. How do you feel now? And that sounds like what you've done with your book. Mm -hmm. Not exactly the same, but, you know, you, you're giving it a different view yeah. of what if this and your people have done like that. Mm -hmm. And you didn't even put them in a position to say, what is the difference? You in this shoe is this 
what if this was your history? And yes, right? the wild, crazy thing about this is, although this is, you know, a paradigm, it's fiction, nonfiction. It's, it's because, you know, these are actual events that have occurred. These are historical events. These are true events that have occurred in the black community and even actual deaths that have occurred in the, in the you know, African-American community. And so nothing in the book that I'm saying is, you know, false. All I've done my research. I've actually have references to each one of the paradigms. So when you read it in the back of the book, I have, you know, the references and citations that those who want to do the fact checking and, you know, the little trolls, they can go and check and do their own research if they like. That's what it's there for. And so nothing in this book, like I said, is going to, it's, it's not a lie. I'm not telling a lie. This is the truth. It's just a race role reverse. It's just a what if. It's, you know, the roles have been reversed now. And so um, it's my hope and prayer that people out there that's listening they go and get the book and, you know, share their comments with it, you know, their friends and their families. Definitely hit me up. Uh, again, go to my website, differenceworld.net. Uh, you can find all my social media handles, my YouTube channel. Please subscribe there. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You guys can follow me there. Um, what else I got going on? You got any more questions for me? Like I said, I feel like I talk too much. <laughs> I've got a couple more. Okay. This one more of a, what is a question? You talked about your childhood growing up and everything, right? Mm-hmm. You know, homeless and, and wow, you went, you did go through a lot, but it made you who you are today. Mm-hmm. The alpha female so, I am today, yes, sir. I know it was rough, but do you think your life would have been different had you not went through? Oh, what you went through? yeah, I think I would have became a statistic, if you will. You know, pregnant, a teenage mom, drop out. I think I would have been just that, and and. Had I not, I, that's where I had to, you know, pro con it, whether if I was going to stay in or go back to where I was. If I would have went back to my environment, I, I wouldn't have seen myself graduating. I would have been a teenage mom. And I'm not looking down on any of the teenage moms out there. I'm not putting them down. But I'm pretty sure anybody that's a teenage parent or was a teenage parent, they would tell you they wish they would have waited. <laughs> but I, I'm glad I didn't end up that way. I had so many people telling me, oh, you're going to have a baby by the time you're 16. Girl, you ain't even going to graduate. Watch, you're going to be on house. You're going to be on this and that. And me being the Sagittarius that I am and just having to prove I love proving people wrong, that was, you know, God's way of showing me, here, here's your way to prove them wrong. It, and it also showed me, because this was my first time seeing, as crazy as it sounds, I actually was placed in nice foster homes, really nice houses in nice parts of Houston. But for me, like I said, I felt it was too good to be true. And so I would squander those situations. I would get kicked out and mess them up. But what I've learned from those, from each one of those was that I, had, I actually had all black foster parents. Each one of my foster parents was black. And they had nice houses. And what, what made me think, you know, dang, why they had this is because they had that degree. They had went to college and went to work. And they had nice jobs. And they had a good job. And they could pay for things. And so that's what it also showed me, that if I went to college and got a degree, you know, I would be able to survive in the real world. I would be able to have a steady income. I wouldn't have to live pillow to post, paycheck to paycheck, like how I was coming up in my environment. That's also, you know, why I stayed in, you know, CPS and, and went through, you know, that hell on earth there. It's because, you know, I seen the, the, the forest through the trees, if you will. I seen the, the, the good alpha. The, the bigger picture, if you will, of me going to school and the opportunity to bring and look at me now. And, you know, and I'm just getting started. I'm only, you know, just now touching my 30s. Imagine where I'm going to be in 10 years, you know. Right. And so even with my YouTube channel, man, people are already starting to learn about me all over the world. In Sri Lanka, they already know who I am. So it, it starts just like that. Anybody out there, like I say, you got dreams, you got goals. You feel like you're destined to live that good life. You're tired of looking at all them celebrities on, on on Instagram and seeing how they live and you feel like that's supposed to be you. Then it's time for you to go and get that. I often tell people you either trying to have that come up like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. You know, with this pandemic, it's taught us all that, you know, life is not promised tomorrow. And so you got to go out there and get chores, you know. So 
they, they come up for their comeback. It's time to get rich during the pandemic or die trying. <laughs> so, and, and, but, but for, for me, the way I, I would say for anybody out there, make sure you do something that, is that you love and that you're passionate about, and then don't the money will come to you later. Find something that you love and your element and you stick to it and you grow with it and you go with it, and then the money will come to you. So don't just right. get into something thinking, oh, we got this going to make me the most money here and there. I'm about the money. I'm about the money. No, do something you love that's, that you're truly passionate about, mm-hmm. something that makes you truly happy, something that doesn't even feel like it's work. And you stick with that and you run with that. And I guarantee you, you have to give yourself time as well. That's what I've noticed too. At least two to three years for your, for your, when you plant your seeds, you have to give it time to grow. So, and nurture it. And so give yourself time. So once you find your element and you stick with it and you go with it, you, you make sure, you know, over time you will see your, 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 the fruits of your labor will come. And so just stick with it and then the money will come to you later. I've seen it. So that's why I'm able to tell people. And I can, I, I'm, I'm practicing what I'm preaching. Like I said, right now I'm planting seeds and I'm, I'm seeing them grow already. It's, it's, it's only been just a little over a year, and I've already seen the difference. And so imagine what it's going to be like for me next year. You know, people all over the world, you know, this book, people are going to hear about it by then. And so just, I got to right. just keep going and keep going. And that's what it is. And I ask that because people go through different things in a lifetime, and you take different paths from other people. No matter who's out there and what you're going through, just know that. Mm-hmm. that's your path you, you're taking and you go through stuff and you learn from stuff what doesn't kill you make you better amen okay what, is it, what doesn't destroy you make you better and you can build off what you go through in your life and it forms you to be the person that you're supposed to be mm-hmm. so what you went through in your life that builds you to be where you are now mm-hmm. what i went through in my life that made me the person i am now so sometimes you have to weather the storm to get to where you want to be so be strong, and no matter what you're going through, be strong, and you will get to what you're trying to be. Just be strong and keep pushing through. Amen. And I, I want to tag on to that again, reverting back to, you know, the mental health, and not just with the black community, but I'm talking to everybody out there listening. You know, just, again, know that it's okay to not be okay, but don't you dare sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Go fix those issues that you got going on in your mind that's playing you, keeping you up at night, got you taking your anger out on others, such as your loved ones and your children or your coworkers and your friends. Go fix those issues. Go take back your power, be it talking with the mental, with a therapist, a, a, a pan therapist, or, or a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, uh, like I said, mending those broken bridges or cutting those people off who mean you know well in life. Do whatever it is that you have to do to free yourself from that mental bondage, because I tell you, that's the only way that you're going to be able to fulfill your destiny. Of course, you're going to have setbacks. There's going to be trials and tribulations no matter what. But once you get a hold of yourself and get control of those mental reins and get, get just a little inkling of how to handle and how to deal with it, I, t- I guarantee you it will get better for you. And again, for anybody out there that's feeling suicidal, I know anybody that's feeling that way, please know it is not the way. Again, if you need to call somebody anonymously, you living in America, in the USA, call this number right now, 1-800-273-8255. That's a crisis hotline. They don't know you. You don't know them. So as far as it goes of people knowing your business, they want not to necessarily know you. So you can still talk with somebody, even if you don't want them to know who you are talk with somebody don't let that be your excuse as to why you don't get your mental health in order and in check okay know this although whatever it is that you went through it may have not been your control it may have not been your fault but it is your problem to deal with and if, even if it's some of those who got sense enough to know that they have issues they have problems that they need to go fix and they want they don't want to do anything about it but just sit there and let it be then it is your fault then you deserve what you're going through. I hate to sound rough. I hate to sound, you know, so callous and cold. But like I said, I'm a realist, and I just try to tell it how it is. Sometimes when you know that it's issues that you want to need to have fixed, you don't want to do anything about it, 
you be complacent about it, are you comfortable in that situation, then it is your fault. You are part of the problem. You have control of that situation. You don't want to do anything about it. Don't go cry and complain and woe is me when you know it's, you have an issue, you have resources that are available to you to get those issues resolved, and you don't want to take it. That is your absolutely your fault. So hear that. There's a lot of people out there that play that victim role and woo me and why I can't do this and that. It's because you don't want to accept the truth. Like I said, with the spirit of the sermon, it shows you the truth whether you like it or not. And you have to, you don't have to, but that's what it comes with being spiritually mature and in tune, being able to accept the things that you, you're not ready for, you don't want, but knowing and understanding and trusting God's will is bigger and better than you have planned for yourself. That's, that's on that part. I'm just tagging off of what you said with the mental health and, and how I was able to conquer and get through what it is that I've been through and what I'm going through. Like, I'm not a perfect person. I'm going through some things right now. Dealing with the loss of my mother is the most hardest thing thus far I've had to deal with in my life. It is the hardest, man. And I know I'm not the only person out there that's lost their mother, but my mama was my best friend. It was my only friend. For me, I've always been a person that likes to stay to myself, so I don't really have a lot of friends like that. But my mother was my ace boom coon. And when she left, it's like, I got friends, but it ain't nobody like her. It ain't gonna never be nobody like her ever again. And I have to accept and understand that this is the way it is. And every December 26th comes around, it's just gonna be the day after Christmas for y'all. But for me, it's gonna be the hardest day on this earth. I'm just trying to prepare myself and come up with positive and healthy ways to grieve and, and healthy, you know, notions and tools to deal with for the rest of my life because it's something I have to deal with for the rest of my life. And I'm and one day I'm fine and the next minute, you know, I'm not. And so that's just what depression is. That sometimes, like I said, I'm not saying I'm suicidal right now, but the, I can see how that leads to suicide and going off the deep end. You know, one day I can just be talking or having being okay, and then the next day I, I you know, think about my mom or, you know, a little memory pops up on my Google Photos, and, you know, I'm just, that's it. I'm just depressed for the rest of the day. So that's how it happens. That's how it starts. So that's why, you know, everybody that's going through any type of mental anguish, it's important to have a plan of action, you know, to stay on a, whole, a healthy, you know, roster and not going off the deep end. You know, even if that means you know medication, <laughs> you know, do it. You know, that's that's what it takes. Don't be ashamed, man, because understand, you know, once you take that step, there's no going back. And you know, especially if you got kids and you got people here that love you, like your parents and your siblings, aunts and uncles and your friends and you know coworkers. You know, you gotta think about them. You know, suicide is a is a permanent solution to a temporary situation. And you know, right. you just have to look at it like that. And knowing that the, and the last part of that sentence, that, that, that sentence was temporary situation, emphasis on the temporary situation, which means it does not last long. It This too shall pass. That's what you have to tell yourself when you in those moments and you're feeling down and out and everything is it's not worth living for. You have to tell yourself this too shall pass. That's what's that what gets me through it, if you will. That's what helps me. And so hopefully, you know, somebody out there that's listening to me, not even, you know, right now, but maybe years down the road, they look back and looking at your podcast and they looking over it and it's like, Wow, you know, this really helps me, man. And it just may save their life. And so that's why I'm sharing my story. That's why I'm I'm sharing and telling my testimony, you know, bump that notion of, you know, whatever I went through. What goes on in this house stays in this house. Some of this stuff, I'm going to let out of this house because I know it's going to help other people in their houses. You know what I mean? Right. I was 32 when my dad passed. And I can tell you, it gets a little better over time. But you never forget. You know, you never forget your parents. So, but over time, it gets better. What you can do Somebody is, told me that pain never goes away. You just you learn how to deal with it, I guess. Yeah. Um, um, I would suggest something like, especially being that it's so close to the holidays, just find your own little tradition that you can do. Yeah, that's what somebody else, that's what somebody else told me to do. Like every, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm just you know, it, it can be something as simple as writing a letter and read it in the next year. Um, wrapping a gift for her for because it's holiday, or taking flowers to her grave, or just something that 
it could be something that y'all did together that y'all used to like together that you can just, you know, I'm going to make this a tradition. I'm just going to go do it, take her picture and y'all do it, still do it. I mean, it's it's just something that you feel like is going to help you. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is that's going to help you feel like will help you feel better about, you know, on that day. I ain't going to lie. I feel like I want to make a shrine for her. <laughs> like, I'm already in the process of uh, having the decal stickers and stuff on the wall. So um, I'm making that for her. And I think one of my friends, they're going to have to have him do, like, a portrait of her, like a painting. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, there's something like that. An immortalizer. Yeah, because a lot of people, I hate to see when people um, take the day that someone passed and just every year they go into this deep depression on that day. Try to do something different, opposite, you know, celebrate her life. Yeah. Celebrate that person's life and... Don't let them be forgot. You know, you're not dead until no one else say your name again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Once somebody stops saying your name, then you're truly forgotten. If I don't know if people heard that before. But once your name is completely stopped being said, that means that you're no longer in anyone's thoughts. So you remember your mom. Mm-hmm. Um, find a tradition on her birthday or the, or the day of her passing that you can do every year. And I think it should be the day of her passing since it's so close to the holidays. That used to be such a happy day for you that doesn't turn into something totally different. Mm-hmm. Do something that's going to help you and her. Um, I got one more question. All righty. I had two, but I got one more I got, I got another chapter two. Okay. You talk about systemic racism what are your thoughts on systemic racism we talked about mental health we talked about racism itself or systemic racism what's your thoughts on that i'm gonna think about it before i just flat out something um <laughs> <laughs> i hate to say it it's it's one of those it's not natural but normal type of things it's to the points of where you know i'm used to it man i grew up in the deep south in, in texas and so I'm, I'm used to experiencing, you know, racism, you know, at times, you know, when I call the police and I need them, you know, and they come, they finally come 45 minutes later, you know, I may be possibly treated like the criminal or like I'm in the wrong and I call them. So that's how it is sometimes mm-hmm. out here. Um, but this just goes back to my book and that's the reason why I wrote the book to, you know, talk, push that envelope to talk about these issues about systemic racism and injustice and, and, and hopefully have those thought-provoking conversations that need to be had. And ultimately, when we have these conversations and talk about these issues and take accountability and talk about in ways and suggestions that we can combat that, then that's, you know, over time, to me, that's where systemic change can take place. And over time, that systemic change they possibly, I don't think it will completely, you know, erase it, but it will help, you know, neutral it out. You know, maybe not for this generation, but what if the next one or the next one? And so this is my shot at Moon, you know, trying to help, if you will, push that envelope to end systemic racism or make it better to where, you know, to the point to where my nephew, who is a 10-year-old black kid who is also on the spectrum, doesn't have to go up in fear. You know, the other day, as this, funny this as you tell me, you have three black, black kids, black boys. I have my nephew that I help take care of. And, you know, we were walking by and the police came and he just automatically put his hands in the air. And I, I told him, stop that. Put your hands down. You know, you don't have to act. Unless right. you did anything wrong, you don't act like you did anything wrong. And it's said that we have to, you know, teach our young boys how to conduct themselves when, the, you know, the law comes around, even though, even if they haven't done anything wrong, you know, they have to act as, you know, extra, make sure they're on their piece of cues when they're around. And that's sad to say, but this is the reason why I have the book so that we can push that, you know, that envelope to have that conversation as to why we got to now train our black boys to be on their P's and cues when, you know, the police officers arrive by, you know, teaching them, making sure, you know, don't sag your pants or don't wear no hoodie you know, to hear there. And that, that's unfortunate, but that's just the way of the world that we're living in. So to answer your question with about systemic racism, um, it sucks. Unfortunately, it's not, it shouldn't be normal, but it, it's, it's a society norm. But hopefully over time, 
not just with my book, but with other people coming together. I now see people, you know, starting to take the initiative, even with these infomercials that I'm seeing, you know, talking about you know, social awareness issues and, you know, inclusion and stuff. And so that's how it starts. People who have platforms, especially in the black community, all these superstars and celebrities using it, they need to use their platforms to talk about these issues in the community that's been played. I'm, I'm happy to see some of them, but we need more of them to do that. Right. So, uh, hopefully I answered your other question. Say so you got another one for me? One yeah. more. I've been doing this series called um, World Tour and visiting and talking to black people around the world in different countries, um, just interviewing about what it's like being black in those other countries because, you know, it's not the same in the United States as it other is not. places. Um, and you're a person that I noted earlier that you travel to multiple mm -hmm. countries. Tell me a story about one of the countries you've been to that's predominantly black. Africa. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Which country? Yeah, I've been to Africa about three, four times already. <laughs> Can't stay out of there. So, so tell me the country and what was it like there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Africa is a continent. You're right. Uh, I've been to three countries <laughs> in Africa. Let me stop that. I can't stay out of the continent of Africa. I've been to about three different countries. Um, my favorite is one. I was in Kenya in 2018, and I went to the Maasai Reserve. That was one of the most memorable times. I've been to Morocco, um, Egypt. Um, yeah, Kenya probably was one of the, the one of the most fun times. I got to see, you know, all the different, you know, features of the, you know, the Kenyan culture, their foreheads and their ears. It's totally different. You can tell, like, their 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 bone structure. That's a true African culture. And then I suppose when we go back to America, we <laughs> we all, you know, worn it down, if you will. Not dissing us, if you will, but going back over there to the motherland, just seeing how they got the... The rich, thick roots, you know, no, no water down, no, no, no mixture of nothing. That's the, the real African blood, if you will. I thought that was cool to see. I took pictures of that. I was, okay. I was really fascinated by it. And uh, I interviewed um, a young man from Haiti. And he was telling me about his visit to Kenya. And he really loved it, just like you did. You know, he was like, that's the best country I've been to in my yes. life. I was like, wow. I really want to go to South Africa to to Cape Town. That's really if you if if a lot of the times they like to pick and it is true, you know, some parts of Africa are the in the country, some of their countries are poor, but they really need to show the the nice side of Africa of how you know the the, the rich black Africans live, if you will. They don't show that too often, so I wish they they did. But it's it's some places out there that's really nice. Even in Kenya, it's not all mud huts and and, and dirt roads. They have really nice places out there. Very okay. civilized. All right. You got any questions for me before um, we go? Let's see. Let's see. You say you've been on a world tour. So what's yeah. one of the places uh, for people that you've interviewed? I've um, interviewed. I've, 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 I've been uh, there. You name them. Uh, Haiti. I haven't been Brazil. there yet. Um, Uganda. No. Um, um, I haven't released Brazil yet, but I've had. Oh, Brazil! What, what? You know, I have a funny story about Brazil. So I'm sitting here being impulsive, and Sagittarius, as usual. In 2018, I was just on my travel book. I was just traveling left and right, and so being impulsive, I bought a ticket to Rio de Janeiro. And on the day that I go to the airport to go there, they tell me, "Where your visa?" At? And I'm like, "I don't have a visa." And so they're like, "Well, you can't go to no, no Brazil." And so. I ended up having to go to Colombia <laughs> and had a really oh, good man. time there. But that, 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 I had to learn a lesson with that, just being so impulsive and yep. not doing my whole research. And so, yeah, I had to chill out more money. But I had a really good time. I had went to Medellin and Bogota. Um, I did the Pablo Escobar tour. I parasailed over 20,000 feet. So it, it was real fun. Um, but, yeah, well, a lot of adventures. Oh, yeah. But in any case, in close out, um, thank you so much for having me. Michelle. I want to take this time to, to remind you that you, you're a king. You got a crown on your head, and you're rocking it oh so well. Congratulations to you and all your success with your podcast. 
I wish you nothing but the best and that, you know, but two, three years from now, you know, you're going to be having the number one podcast on all the podcast platforms out there. Everybody out there listening, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to get my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. It's available on my website at different12.net, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T-S-W-O-R-L-D.net. You can look me up for all my other social handles, including my YouTube channel, which don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Once you do, check it out. You get all of my latest adventures and my travel excursions and all of my podcast interviews and other of my other social issues that I talk about, like I said, uh, my uh, other topics and motivational speakings, you can check it out there, my Facebook, my Instagram, and Twitter as well. Um, again, thank you guys so much. Again, don't forget with your mental health, make sure you keep it in order and in check. And remember whatever it is in life that you are feeling you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and then it will surely come to you guys. Difference will come and learn. Thank you. From one Sagittarius to another, yeah. thank you very thank much. You, thank <laughs> you, thank you, thank you. We got to stick together. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And that is different. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my podcast interview with the Let's Talk About It podcast. Again, big shout out to the host, the Ron Frazier. Be sure you guys make sure you go and follow him on his his podcast on the podcast. Uh, a podcast platform. I think it's Anchor. Uh, if not, be sure to uh, I have his link in my description. Uh, whatever po- podcast platform he is on, uh, be sure to check him out and follow him. And again, big shout out to him for having me on his podcast. And as you guys seen, the conversation was deep, man. I'm talking, you know, more than six feet deep, man. We had, uh, you know, talked about mental health wellness and, and keeping it in check as well as my book, you know, like I said, it was stemmed around Juneteenth. And so the main part of that subject was talking about my book, uh, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and bust this thing on out right here, you know, right here. Here it is, y'all. <laughs> what If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Again, it's a book that's written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And it's, again, it's intended for a mature audience, you guys. So for those who cannot take this type of heat or are willing or want to or just refuse to, you know, uh, uh, accept the truth or see it in a different perspective, uh, don't even bother coming to this kitchen. Don't worry. You'll, you'll get the message whether you want to or not. You know, somebody, you'll see these photos and these illustrations whether you want to or not. Um, but, but for those who do... Be sure to go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy, as well as be sure to check me out on all my other social media platforms, including my YouTube channel. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, and again, you guys, when if you need me or you want me to be a part of your grassroots conversation or do any type of motivation speaking at any of your events, you can go to my website, again, differenceworld.net, and you can book me there. I'm free of charge as of now, you guys, as of now. I'm in humble beginnings, but when I come up, it's over with for y'all. <laughs> um, but in any case, you guys, oh, real quick, thank you guys so much uh, for all the love and support I'm getting. You guys, I'm dropping these back to back to back. I just dropped, or, or a few weeks back, uh, I dropped the... Um, travel tra- travel vlog to my trip to Athens. Thank you guys all for the love and support that I'm getting for that as well as uh, my confessions from a former foster kid. Uh, man, that was a very deep and touchy subject to go on. It took me a while to do. Uh, it was a hard process for me to do, you know, to dredge up all those hard, you know, feelings I had put away for so long and all that pain and, and it, it hurt it for me to talk about those issues but it also uh, some part of it healed. I was able to heal from some of the things that hurt me in the past. Not all of it, but some of it. And so that's why I say it's important to, even if you don't even talk about it with others, you can talk about it to yourself, even with journaling. You know, getting it off your chest, you know, letting that shit out and let it go uh, because you have bigger and better things to achieve in life and you can't fly with all that weight on you. And so that was the main message um, in that that vlog or part of my message. And if you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. Um, uh, my previous vlog was the confessions of a former foster kid. Um, and I got more coming, you guys. And so be on the lookout for that. I'm actually I'm going to do a blog. I'm going to chill out uh, for a while. Uh, my mother's birthday is around the corner. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very antsy, you guys. I'm honestly, how I'm feeling about it is um, I'm ready for it to be over, like just to come and go, and so I, I can get over that day and that hump and that pain. 
Um, I got plans just to sleep for the whole day, honestly. <laughs> um, uh, that I think is better than the alternative, so to speak, you know, as opposed to being up and crying and depressed and eating junk food, you know, knowing when I shouldn't be. Um, and so I think that's probably going to be the better thing for me or, you know, you know, spending time with a family member. Um, but again, you guys keep me in your thoughts and your prayers because I need it right now. You know, this will be the first birthday without my mother and, um, I'm hurting without her, but I know she's okay. Um, I just, I just trying to figure out how to deal with it in a positive and healthy manner. Um, and so that's why I say it's important to, you know, make sure you're keeping your mental health in check. And while it being a mental health check, health, health check time, <laughs> be sure you guys, it's you guys are making sure that you're keeping your mental health in check by doing whatever it is that you have to do to make sure that you don't go off the deep end or take anybody with you. If you know somebody or you yourself may need these mental health resources, please share them with them. Uh, for those who you know need the crisis hotline, you can either call 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741741. For those who would like to go online, you can go to mentalhealthishealth.us. Or for those who are outside of the U.S., you can go online to incounseling.com. That again is spelled E-N-C-O-N, excuse me, I've got a little brain for it. E-N-C-O-N-E-S-E-L-I-N-G. <laughs> Woo wee Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you guys. And just remember, it is okay to not be okay, but just never, 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 ever, ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, man. Whatever that may mean to you, you get that shit. Okay? And so with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for all your love and support. Be sure to like, comment, and share or and subscribe to my YouTube channel and as well as for sharing this video, you guys. I truly appreciate it. Uh, thank you again to my boy, Theron. Be sure to follow him and everybody out there that's listening and watching. Make sure you guys, you again, you, for those who are working on it, make sure you don't they come up playing like Cardi B or they come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. Again, for those who are feeling they are destined in life for the greatness, they got to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. That is the only way that it will come to. Different 12, come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slaves trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.